and uh, first of all thanks uh, to team my dad for inviting us and thank you ma'am for organizing this wonderful symposium regarding type 1 diabetes because we have all the conferences and major focuses only on type 2 though we have a large number of type 1 diabetic patients and these are the patients who need more care and that is why we as physicians have to be more sensitive to their needs and this I think can be done by having more such interactive sessions and sensitizing to the needs of the patient. So as Tejas has discussed the girl, 20, 12 year old and now we have to hold her hand through the journey of this disease further. So, so what will be the main element for the success of the therapy? Of course, all of us are in uh, focusing on it right from first, that is management includes insulin and monitoring. So effective, what is our aim? Effective delivering ex exogenous insulin to maintain the glucose level as close to the individual's target range as possible to prevent the development and progression of complications without having episodes of hypoglycemia. It can be minor hypo, uh, or major hypoglycemia, especially we need to avoid level two and level three hypoglycemia. Along with that, we need to prevent DKA. So we have to provide approaches and treatment and devices that minimize the psychosocial burden of living with type 1 diabetes and consequently the related distress as well as promoting the psychosocial well-being. So that is most important. We have to control patients' blood glucose levels without reach, I mean, without she ending up in hypo or DKA and see to the psychosocial well-being, which is the part which is more often neglected because we are very busy, not able to answer to all the queries that the patient or the family needs to know. And therefore, we have to give more time. Now, the, today we are celebrating centenary year of insulin. Uh, 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 since the time it was uh, manufactured, there is a lot of progress, lot of newer insulins. And therefore, now we have a huge armamentarium of insulin. Like we had, uh, we have an OHA armamentarium. We also have insulin armamentarium. Like Dr. Prasanna was talking today morning, Earlier in the initial days, there, were, there was only rapid acting insulin and that is what was used for treating type 1 diabetes also. But over the century, there is a lot of new insulins available and depending on the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic profiles of each one of them, so we can classify them according to like rapid acting uh, analogs, which is Lispro, Espart or Glulysin. There is ultra rapid acting analog also, which is uh, uh, marketed as uh, FIASP or fi uh, faster acting Espart. Short acting insulin is the regular human insulin and then there is an uh, uh, intermediate acting NPH. Again, there are long acting insulins, the basal insulins like Glargin and Detimir, and ultra long acting basal are uh, U300 uh, Glargin and Degludec. So these are the insulins, the basal insulins, which have nearly peakless profile. So each insulin can be used, uh, but depending on the patient's of, uh, econ I mean, cost consideration, education, motivation, Everything can be considered when you are using uh, insulin. Again, the delivery systems are available like the syringes, the pens, and the pumps. Now, syringes are the ba basic, uh, I think it, is, it was one which is used very commonly earlier. Now also in smaller cities, it is the syringes which are being used most. And we have to uh, understand that when you are writing syringes, the cartridge and, I mean, the, uh, the vial and the syringe has to match. So if the vial is of U40, you have to use U40 syringe. And if the vial is of U100, the U100 syringe has to be used. Each vials and syringes are color coded. So it is easier to, even for the patient or the relatives who may not be very well educated to understand this aspect. So therefore, there should not be any mismatch in using this. Again, now the pen devices are available, which are very convenient for the patient. Less pain, uh, there can be a disposable pen or reusable pen. Considering type 1, we always want them to use a re I mean, refillable uh, pen. The ideal, the other uh, uh, delivery option would be a continuous subcutaneous infusion pump 
these pumps are uh, the most physiological way we can uh, deliver the insulin to type 1 diabetic patients. So there are a uh, fixed uh, do, do regimen going on, but it is costly. Again, there are newer pumps which are like uh, sensing the hypoglycemia, stopping when there is a hypo, and even uh, there are uh, dual pumps which can even uh, give other hormone like glucagon to prevent the hypoglycemia. So these are the adva I mean, advances that are happening in even the delivery device system. Now, once we start the patient on insulin, again, as I said, uh, there are pre, uh, the short acting as well as long acting insulin. So ideally, it should be that there can be 50% of rapid acting and 50% of basal. Basal will co cover the 24 hours and the rapid acting will cover each meal. Ideally, you should at least have more than two daily bolus injections and more than one basal injection. It can, the most ideal would be a basal bolus regimen, but it may not be always practical. Patient may not be willing. So in those patients, you can have a split mix regimen. Then that means you can, in the syringe, fill the short acting first and then the long acting insulin. The split mix is different from premix because premix has the uh, mixture in a fixed ratio like 30-70, 25-75 or 50-50. This does not enable us to alter uh, the dose of either. Therefore, even if there is restriction because of cost or whatever, you can uh, give a mix, but it has to be a split mix, not the premix, especially for type 1. Saying that, again, I am re-emphasizing the choice would be a basal bolus therapy. Uh, so whenever patient comes to you, again, the you, insulin therapy needs to be assessed. Whether we are able to meet the target A1C, uh, whether there is lesser risk of hypo, and it allows the flexibility in the carbohydrate intake and flexibility in the daily schedule and activities. We have to remember, try and give more flexibility to the patient. Instead of patient ex uh, adjusting the lifestyle to the insulin, we should offer options wherein the insulin can adjust to the patient's lifestyle. So that is one thing where we can help the patient by doing that. Again, Emphasizing on injection technique is very important. Uh, improper use of uh, uh, injection needles can lead to pain, bleeding, bruising, or uh, uh, dosage inaccuracy. And another important part is lipodystrophy. So whenever patient is injecting at the same site, it may cause lipodystrophy or lipohypertrophy. And because of that, the absorption of insulin is altered. But because that site does not have much pain, patient tends to inject at the same site. Therefore, when patient comes to you, you have to assess the injection site also. So while you, we ask the dose of the patient, you have to see the vial, the syringes, the dose that the patient is taking, and you have to examine the injection site also. The rotation of injection site is also equally important because, as I said, it prevents the lipohypertrophy and it is a good practice to educate the patient regarding the uh, rotation of the site. So it can be uh, rotated between the thighs, the abdomen and the arms. Each site has different absorption uh, rate. Uh, uh, abdominal insulin will be absorbed faster than those given on the thighs. Again, the activity level will also alter the absorption levels. Now, managing diabetes 24-7 is a jugglery. It has to be between the exercise, the food intake. So whenever the patient is taking insulin, the concern is what to eat, when to eat, what to exercise, when to exercise. So each regimen has to be individualized. Patient's timing regarding the exercise and the food has to be taken care of. Again, we have to educate the patient regarding hypo as well as DKA. So there is, uh, during exercise, if there is high intensity exercise, patient may tend to have hypo. Therefore, he or sh uh, she should be advised to take a small carb snack before exercising. Uh, monitoring glucose levels is very important. Look for hypo as well as uh, ketosis when the patient is having, uh, 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 patient is exercising. Now, after uh, advising everything, if the patient is still not on goal, not on the standard that you want, 
then what should we do? There should be an intensified approach, including education, monitoring, and contact with the diabetes team. So especially the elder, adults and children and younger children need to be counseled more. The entire team has to have uh, in touch with them, need to reassess the nutrition, need to reassess the uh, exercise pattern and everything. Even the family and the psychological interventions has to be done uh, for both the patient as well as family. And there comes the role of support groups like uh, JDF and Udan, which Madam has already discussed. The support groups are very important when a type 1 diabetic meets another type 1 diabetic, their confidence and their uh, uh, positivity to manage the disease is increased. Uh, so if the patient is still not on target and then what are the options? We increase the frequency of injections, change in the type of basal or bolus insulin or if possible change to the uh, subcutaneous infusion uh, pump. Now, if we shift the patient on insulin, intensive insulin therapy, as we have for type 2 uh, UKPDS like that, we have an uh, intensive uh, study for type 1 diabetes like DCCT, and it has shown that intensive control reduces the risk of microvascular complication. Even the follow-up study, the EDIC study, have shown that those who were controlled intensively and orally have lesser risk of microvascular complications even later in life. So even if you have a good control later, but you have wasted earlier time, then that risk of microvascular complications cannot be reduced. But the disadvantage of intensive insulin therapy would be, again, a risk of hypoglycemia and weight gain. So it has to be titrated quite well. Now, as we have been discussing, the other important aspect of managing type 1 diabetes is monitoring. Without acute monitoring, without uh, accurate monitoring, the risk of acute crisis and the long-term micro as well as macrovascular complications are greatly increased. So most important aspect in managing the glycemic control is 7-point SMBG. Tejas had already given a chart, so I'm not emphasizing more on it. But if the 7-point, that is pre-post breakfast, pre-post lunch, pre-post dinner, and midnight, if that is not possible, whatever two or three pa uh, sugars patient can do, you should advise them to do it and maintain a log. Maintaining a log is equally important. The use of technology has again helped us and there is a CGMS which can be a professional or a personal use. The criteria for CGMS again is more than 70% time uh, in the time in range and less than 4% time below range. This is very important to avoid hypo. So that is the criteria we should use if you're putting a patient on CGMS. HbA1c, again, the goal depends on the age, but at least 7.5 uh, is what we would aim for. Type 1 diabetics should also be advised to monitor urine ketones. So ketones, because especially if the, there is a sick day, they should me measure sugar as well as ketones to rule out DKA. Then there can be urine ketones in case of starvation. So that time also they need to monitor sugar and they can correlate it with the blood ketones levels to find out whether there is a situation like DKA or it is a dehydration and stress-induced ketosis. Along with the glycemic monitoring, we also need to monitor for the chronic complications. So we need to assess for microalbuminuria, retinal examination, as well as foot examination. And since they are children, always do not forget to look for growth and pubertal changes. Now, as, as we know, the technology advances and there are many mobile apps in diabetes. So even type 1 diabetics can, be, uh, can use all these apps, which helps them in ma maintaining the log, monitoring the diet and exercise. So all this has really changed the outlook of management of type 1 diabetes. And therefore, I would just like to end by saying that Dr. Jocelyn has just said that the person with diabetes who knows the most lives the longest. And this is especially true for type 1 diabetic patients. And therefore, we have to educate them to empower them to live with the type 1 diabetes. Thank you.